Okay, all you're gonna do, right click, retime controls. Boom, all done. If that's all you were looking for, then hey, just use Google next time. But I have a feeling most of you guys are here to learn how to make some of those dreamy montages that you see in some of your favorite videos. Grab your favorite brand of 10% Hawaiian coffee, sit down or stand up if you've got a standing desk and let's get into it. So there are actually a few ways to do some speed changing within DaVinci Resolve. If you have a video selected, go over to inspector tab and there will actually be an option called speed change. Here you can change the overall speed of the entire clip. So you see, I just dragged it down. I can expand this out and now we're playing at 50% of the speed. Similarly, you can right click on your video and go to change clip speed. And this will give you some similar controls to the inspector tab. But this is a pretty general way of doing this. What if we wanted to have a little specificity? Like I showed you in those opening sections, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and go to retime controls. And this will bring up the retiming options within DaVinci Resolve. But before we can move on, there's something you have to understand and that's frame rate. In order for a video to be a video, it has to have a certain number of frames per second or FPS. Now most movies or TV shows that you're gonna watch are gonna be shot in 24 frames per second. Actually it's 23.976. I know, but in the gamer world, what we typically work in is 60 frames per second. Why? One, we like to make life harder than it needs to be. And two, because most gameplay is played at a higher frame rate. So when you go to post it on YouTube, it tends to look smoother and it gives the viewer a more realistic experience as to what they would be playing. Why is this important? Boo. Say I'm working with a 24 FPS clip on a 24 FPS timeline, meaning that in one second we have 24 frames. If you were to slow down that clip to 50% of its speed, well, now you've stretched your 24 frames over the course of two seconds, meaning now you actually have 12 frames per second. But what is DaVinci gonna do in those areas where the frame is now moved? Should it just duplicate the frames? Does it just take an average of the frames? Or is DaVinci gonna do some kind of weighted average based on the time signature and the color of each pixel? I'm gonna talk about some of the ways we can tackle some of these problems, but your best solution is to record in a higher frame rate. It's why when you hear people talking about slow motion footage and cameras, they'll talk about recording in absurdly high frame rates. That way, no matter how slow they decide to slow down this footage, they'll have information to cover those gaps. So if you know you're gonna be editing a clip for a montage or something that you want to slow down, record in a higher frame rate. But only do this if you know you're gonna be doing some slow motion stuff. There's no need to record in 120 FPS all the time if all you're gonna be doing is some raw gameplay uploads. But if you are a degenerate like me and you didn't plan ahead, let's go ahead and hop back into DaVinci and tackle some of these problems. All right, hopefully you've got your 10% Hawaiian coffee. Today's gameplay model is going to be Mr. Exact, if you didn't know, I've been editing for Z for a long time and we're gonna be using one of his gameplay clips for today's example. And there's a particular moment right here that I feel like works well. After he knocks his player, and this is Call of Duty, if you don't play Call of Duty, he slides past them. I feel like that would be a cool moment to do some slow-mo stuff. So let's talk about how we would slow this down, how we would make it look better, and then some good practices to use for your own gameplays. So like I mentioned in the video, I'm working on a 60 frame per second timeline and my clip is in 60 frames per second, meaning I do not have spare frames to work with. If I wanted to slow down this particular section, what I would do is I would right click on our video and I would go to retime controls. Again, this brings up the retime controls within DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you've done your homework or read ahead, you'll notice there's a little drop down arrow here. You can click on that and this will give you some of the basic options. So say for instance, I wanted to slow this entire clip down to 50%. I can go to change speed, 50%. And what do you know? If I were to play this back, we've got some slow motion happening. But what that does is it makes our entire clip 50% of the speed. I just want the slide to be slow. Well, if you're smart, you could say, well, just cut the clip there and slow it down. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna have to make a bunch of different cuts. I wanna work within this specific clip. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to the beginning of our slide. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to this drop down menu and hit add speed point. This essentially separates our clip's speed into two sections. We have a left side and a right side. So again, if I were to go to the right side and go to this drop down menu and hit change speed to 50%, you'll notice that now only the right half of our clip is at 50% of the speed. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. One thing to note, and this is something that I normally do when I start doing some retiming controls, is I will actually turn on the trim mode. I have mine mapped to Shift and W, and if you don't remember what the trim mode is, it essentially pushes things and pulls things in instead of overriding them. So say for instance, I had this clip here and I wanted to extend it, I can use the trim mode to extend it without overriding it. The reason I say that is because when we start to slow things down, if I were to change this clip speed to 50% and I wasn't in the trim mode, so I'm in the normal mode, change speed, 50%, it's going to overwrite anything to the right of our footage. Sometimes that's not an issue, but if I'm working with something in the middle of the timeline, I'd like to keep whatever's to the right of my play. So when I'm in the trim mode and I go to change speed, 50%, it pushes everything out to the right. Okay, so back to the clip. I really only want it slowed down kind of through here. So how do we get the right portion of our footage to be back to 100% of the speed? Well, to do that, we go to our drop down menu on the right side and had another speed point. Again, because this is now adding a separate region for DaVinci to re-time. But now that we have it split again, I can go over to the right drop down menu and hit reset to 100. And now we'll be back at normal speed. It's gonna become important when you start splitting things up to make note of which drop down menu that you work with. Because every time you add a new speed zone, speed region, you're gonna add a new drop down menu for that region, controlling that zone's speed. So now, if I were to play this back, we have a slowed down region. But to be honest, it's still a little bit longer than I would like. So how do we add some nuance and add some control to our slow down region? With each speed point that you add, you'll notice that there are two handles attached to it. There's one on the top and it's got two lines and there's one on the bottom and it has one line. Each of these actually controls one aspect of your speed region. So let's say for instance, I actually don't want the slowdown to happen until right here. Well, what I can do is I can move our speed point by dragging the bottom handle. And what this does is it's going to move our point or our keyframe to this location. So I can do the same with the right side and say, I, I think right there, after he throws the grenade, let's drag the bottom side of this right handle, bring that in. Now, if I grab the top handle, watch what happens to the speed percentage next to our drop down menu. I grab the top handle and move it to the right. See, it's decreasing. So the top handle actually keeps the same location of your speed point, but changes its landing location. So if you have a particular region, like we do, the sliding region, and I want to retime it so that it's a certain speed, I can grab my top handle and either speed it up or slow it down to be whatever speed that I would like it to be. So why might this be useful? Because we have some default speeds within DaVinci Resolve. Well, say for timings purposes, say you're trying to sync to a song or something like that, this clip stays here and you have a gap here that you're trying to fill. Well, I can grab this top handle and extend this guy out so that we hit that clip. Another really cool trick that you can use when you're doing retiming stuff is anytime you're retiming a certain clip, it has this top border here. And if I were to hover my mouse on the right most corner on the top border, you'll notice that my mouse changes to left and right arrows and I can grab the border and it applies the same kind of retiming effect. So I can snap my edge to the next clip. I tend to find this to be more useful and if I'm working with just maybe like one or two regions and I just kind of want to extend my clip out to match a certain point, but it is a very useful feature within DaVinci Resolve. Now, if I were to play back our slow down section, it's going to be very choppy. And this is again because we've got 60 FPS gameplay on a 60 FPS timeline. We've slowed down our clip to 14%. So DaVinci doesn't know what to do on those in-between frames. And so we get this choppy kind of motion. How do we fix it? There are some pretty straightforward ways that you can fix this within DaVinci Resolve. And to be honest, for the most part, they do a really good job but there are some more advanced techniques that you can use to really smooth things out. I'm not gonna cover those techniques here because I'm probably not the best person to talk about it, but if at the end of this video you are curious, I'm gonna leave a link in the description or a tag somewhere so that you can go explore and learn more about how to do that. Most of you guys aren't going to need to do that. All you're gonna need to do is to select your video, go up to your inspector tab, 
and scroll down until you see the retime and scaling controls. And this is gonna be what DaVinci does to interpolate your slow down footage. By default, it says project settings, and that's because for every project, there are some default settings for your retime controls. The first menu that we're gonna work with is the retime process, and it gives you the options of nearest, frame blend, or optical flow. And these are gonna work essentially how they sound. So if I were to change this to frame blend and I play this back, it's gonna try to blend your frames to fill in those gaps. We get some overlapping kind of effects and you get this almost like ghosting effect within your footage. That's what you're looking for, great, but most of you guys are looking for something smoother and the way to get that is go to your retime process, go to optical flow, and the one we want is enhanced better. And what this is gonna do is it's going to take some weighted averages of either the frame number and the pixels involved to try to morph your frames into the next frame. And that's what this looks like. Much better. Couple notes on this. The way the optical flow works again is it's going to try to blend and morph like pixels and frames together. So this is gonna work really well when not a lot is moving on screen. So what that means for most of you guys doing gameplay stuff is things happening around the edge or you shooting your gun or reloading or doing different kind of animations. When you introduce change like that into the frame, you're gonna get some very wonky looking kind of things. So I'm gonna play this again and watch the outside frames of this video. See how we get some kind of distortion along the border, but because the character model essentially is staying the same in the middle of the screen, it looks very smooth. Let me go back a frame. So things like this, right? You can see it's trying to figure out, ooh, okay, he's throwing it, something's happening in between. So my big piece of advice is if you're going to do this, do this in sections where not a lot of new information is being passed on screen. There's no arms coming into frame, there's no explosions, or if you do have something where an arm is in frame or explosion is happening, start the slow motion after they've entered the frame. Because then DaVinci can blend things pretty smoothly once things have started. Now you can go ahead and mess with a lot of these other read time settings, but the big takeaway is you're gonna want optical flow enhanced better. One of the paid for options is speed warp. I haven't messed too much with it because it basically almost crashes my PC every time. So what I would say is just optical flow enhanced better. That's kind of what you want whenever you're doing slow motion stuff. So one of the last questions that you might have is what if I wanted to do a gradual change? Because right now we go from 100 and it boom, abruptly 14%. So how would we ramp down to 14%. Well, if you do go to the drop down menu on one of these speed zones, there is an option to do a speed ramp, but I don't know if I'm just not looking at this correctly, but I have never used this and it always scares me <laughs> whenever it pops up. So a better way of doing this is you're gonna wanna right click on your video file and go to retime curve. And what this does is give you a visual representation of the actual speed happening in your clip. Before we do anything, double check that it says retime speed. On older versions of DaVinci Resolve, this used to be your retime frame. Your retime frame is actually the overall progression of the total clip's length. It's not what we want. We want the retime speed. You can change the scale of the axis by dragging the zoom percentage on the top and the bottom. So if something's not quite fitting into frame, go ahead and mess with those guys. But what we can do is if I were to zoom in here and I wanted to ramp down from 100% to 14%, I click on this speed point and I change it from our linear marker to our curved or splined marker. And immediately things change and we get two handles to the left and right. And so I can grab these handles and I can start to change our ramp from normal to slow down. If you only wanna change one side, hold down the control option and this will let you control one handle. So I could drag this guy out and say I want a gradual slow down, something like that. And now we should ease out into our slow down section. All right, so he's plating and now we start to slow down, slow-mo. Now I can't tell you how to make your montage feel and look smooth. That's just gonna come with practice. Obviously you're gonna wanna sync things up so they line in with beats and music and all that good stuff. And if that's something that you're curious as to how I would do, let me know and I can try to do an unedited edit 
on how I would retime and pace a montage sequence. If you have more questions, obviously leave a YouTube comment and I will do my best to get back to it. But I just launched my own Discord and this is gonna be a place for you guys to ask more Da Vinci specific questions, for us to collaborate on things, all that good stuff. Go check it out, it's there. I appreciate you guys. Have a good day. Peace. Or night, or morning. Have a good one.